One of Canada's most precious resources, the Great Lakes, is in danger. And it has nothing to do with climate change or pollution. The problem is a fish, a voracious, aggressive fish called the Asian carp. And they're moving north from the United States through rivers and streams. Already their DNA has been found in lakes Michigan and Erie. And some say it's only a matter of time before they destroy the natural balance in one of the last great reservoirs of fresh water on Earth. For one weekend every year, the population of Bath, Illinois multiplies tenfold. The draw? A fishing derby like none other, the Redneck Fishing Tournament. You'll see them all here. The best in the Midwest. Catch the flying fish. Ugly, awful looking thing. Here, you don't need a fishing rod or much skill. Just stick your net out and a fish is bound to fly right into it. Oh, one behind you there, one behind you. Ah! Hey, I'm gonna turn around. We'll hit that ball again. Wow. The seven mile stretch of the Illinois River called the Bath Chute didn't always look this way. But more than a decade ago, the Asian carp moved in, eating away the habitat of the native fish and taking over the water. As you can see, there's no way you can take a family down this body of water and enjoy any sort of day without getting beat up. Ow! The fish jump because they're stirred by the vibration of boat engines, an eight-pound projectile flying in the air, into boats, and into people. When you get slimed with one of these carp, it's almost like getting a glazed donut sliming all over you. You're like coated. Is that really going to happen? Yeah, I hope so. I hope you get carp. <laughs> Ow! Anybody here get hit? Oh, everybody. You want to hit in the eye? Yeah. Shoulder, shoulder. Shoulder, neck. Arm. Look at your leg. That's called being thinned. What is it like being hit with? What can you liken it to? It's like being punched in the face. They come flying at you at like 25 miles an hour. Entertaining though it may look, there is a purpose behind this aquatic obstacle course. Getting as many of the Asian carp out of the water as possible. <laughs> Betty DeFord created the tournament eight years ago. You see all the people here, all the fun they're having. The whole idea behind that whole tournament for me is to spread the awareness of what's going to happen because they have taken over our fun. They've taken over our waterways. At the end of two days and 3,600 people, there are 11,000 fewer carp in the water. But that's merely a dent in the population of 60,000 that swim this stretch of the Illinois River alone. The flying fish are also a YouTube sensation, drawing millions of views. You see it on YouTube, and it's kind of funny until you realize you, it's not that funny if this was home. Canadian scientists are now warning that if the spread of Asian carp isn't stopped, parts of the Great Lakes could look similar to the Illinois River. They would first arrive in Lake Michigan and from there spread. According to Becky Cudmore with the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans, this is what a possible Asian carp invasion of the Great Lakes could look like in 20 years' time. They will be able to find suitable spawning habitat. They will be able to find enough food for them to reproduce and grow large populations. And in doing so, they're going to outcompete and push out our native fish. The fish have been dubbed aquatic pigs, renowned for their appetites and capable of growing up to 100 pounds. They can eat 20 to 40 percent of their weight a day. And because they can reproduce many times a year and they have a lot of young, that they can then also take over a space very quickly. So in terms of our native species, they're outcompeted in terms of food and space. 
They're like vacuum cleaners. Large vacuum cleaners that siphon off 20% of their own weight every day. Eating is exactly why these fish were brought to North America in the first place. Native to China, they were imported to the southern U.S. in the 60s as a means of controlling excess algae and weeds in fish farms. Anthony Ricciardi is an invasive species professor at McGill. Trouble is, nobody explained that they should only focus on invasive weeds or problematic ones. They started eating up wetlands as well, and so they pose a problem for, for biodiversity and, and, uh, and wetland habitat. For 30 years, the problem was mostly contained. But in 1994, the Mississippi River Basin flooded and the Asian carp spread, bleeding into tributaries, including the Illinois River, which leads directly to the Great Lakes. Here, about an hour's drive south of Chicago is the last line of defense against the migrating Asian carp. It's a series of electric barriers placed underwater in this man-made canal designed specifically to stop the Asian carp from ever reaching Lake Michigan. Does this work? Yes, it does. Lieutenant Colonel Jim Schreiner is with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that built this $30 million barrier. The electricity which is pulsing into the water would eventually uh, shock or disable the fish and then they would float naturally back downstream of the barrier. It's not intended to kill the fish, but it is intended obviously to impede any movement upstream towards Lake Michigan. So it's a jolt in the water. It is a jolt in the water. What's alarming to some is the discovery of Asian carp DNA on the other side of the barrier, an unexplained phenomenon to date. Could have been a dead fish. There's a number of different possibilities that could give you a positive hit. Asian carp are sold in Chinatown in Chicago. Uh, they put them on ice. The ice melts with some of the blood and some of the, the other elements of the fish and wash down the stream, ultimately into the canal. But there is another way for Asian carp to reach the Great Lakes, the same way we do. Despite federal laws in the U.S. banning the live trade of the fish, shipments across state lines and across the border haven't stopped. When was the last time Canada stopped a shipment of live Asian carp? The last time I heard was, was in the winter or in the spring. This year? Yes, three times at least that I know of. Three times in the past year, trucks have tried to cross the border. The past border six months, about three times, yes. With live Asian carp. Thousands of pounds worth of live Asian carp, of the ones we know that would establish here. It's the job of inspectors like Robert Ipp and Rick Andrews with the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources to stop the fish from getting in and to find the ones that already have. Today we're going to be conducting inspections in the Greater Toronto Area. We will be looking at uh, the Asian carp in the, in the markets that we're going to today. In Canada, the laws aren't as clear-cut as in the U.S. Each province has a different set of regulations. So we check the tanks in the back too? In Ontario, the possession of live Asian carp is banned. A little bit of big head left. Can you scoop it? Can we see their big head? Yeah. So there's your, um, there's your big head right there. The market is in compliance. They're not breaking the law. I don't see anything live around here. So this is Asian carp, but it's okay to sell because it's dead and not live. Precisely. Possess, buy, sell, dead is absolutely fine. Possess, buy, sell, live, that's a problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All good. While this market is clean, it doesn't always happen that way. Since 2005, there have been 12 convictions related to buying and possessing live Asian carp. Back when it was legal to import live Asian carp, Andy Ipp, who owns one of the largest wholesale fish markets in the Toronto area, used to bring in regular shipments. How much Asian carp was there a demand for? On the old day, we're doing between uh, 25,000 pounds a week. 25,000 pounds a week? Yes, 25,000 pounds Where a week. Where is the demand? It's one of the uh, Asian Chinese uh, eating culture. So and they then, want it live? Yeah, and then they want it live because that is the tradition. 
Today, while on patrol, the inspectors encounter a shipment from Wind Fishery of Markham, Ontario. Twice in the past five years, a driver for this hauling company has been convicted of bringing in live Asian carp. How you doing? Right? Yeah, we want to look in all of them. And then what about in here? So big head there, yeah. grass carp as well. Yep. This time, the company is in compliance. So down here we have both big head carp and we have the grass carp as well. So you see the big head there, grass carp of course. Same thing again, we're just gonna have a look at them, make sure that they're not moving around at all. But the concern is that the demand for live Asian carp is still there and that for some companies, that will justify the risk. As long as there are trucks bringing in live Asian carp into the country, even if they're stopped at the border, that risk continues. And you wonder how many carp or other fish that are of interest are sold through the black market. Are we not being alarmist here? Well, if people like me didn't say anything and they get through, then the government's gonna come back and says, you know, it would have been nice if you would, if you would flag this as a, as a concern. So that's what we're doing. Based on the evidence, we would project that if this continues, this is a threat. And these are the threats you have to worry about. If they are to breach the barrier or if live trade brings them into the Great Lakes, what will that mean for the experience people will have on the Great Lakes? I suppose if we wait long enough, what will happen is, is that maybe in a generation's time, people are going to talk about how there's less walleye now, that uh, there's a lot less fish to be caught. The point is, is that what we learn from that history is that you can't underestimate the capacity for an invasive species, a single one potentially, to be a complete game changer.